Welcome to this week's video and this week I've picked myself up a PS Vita 1000 bundle. So it was listed for £120, I did a cheeky offer of 80 and they weirdly accepted it. I hope the games are going to be worth almost this much on their own. So there's a description of the fault. So the reason I paid more than I'd like to is purely because of what it came with. So as you can see it comes with all these games. It comes with a carry case and the charger. Hopefully the charger works, it looks in decent condition. So we get the Vita out and overall condition looks pretty good but then straight away I notice the issue seems to be the port so I'm assuming this is going to be a problem. It also comes with a decent sized card which also is of good value so I'm quite happy with that. So we try and turn it on but obviously nothing's coming on, it's completely dead. This is when I thought to myself, a USB-C port might be the answer. So we need to open it all up. So I'll just get my iFixit kit out and get all these Phillips head screws out the sides and out the back. And then there's a couple hidden away underneath here. We take the card out and then you just need to get a lipper to run around the edges and then prise it apart. Just have to be quite careful because there are a couple of cables attached to the back. We've got the battery cable and the rear touch sensor cable connected. So we just lever them off. And then we can separate the two. So I'm going to use this iFixit mat, this magnetic mat, to attach gummy parts to that I take out. Because I'm not a regular PS Vita fixer, I don't really remember where the parts go. So if I'm using this, I'll be able to take them off and the magnetic pad will keep them in place. Just position them on the board in a similar location and the magnetic background will keep them in place so it will be easy to put them back together later. I also can draw a little bit around, so we can do a little rough outline of the PS Vita so I know exactly where everything's going. So I can just mark everything up, just move it all in position and then this way it's going to be a lot easier when I'm putting it all back together. So there's lots of screws, there's lots of little brackets, there's all different coloured screws, so I'm not sure why but I want them all going in the right place. I'll just draw a little bit more so I know where, where's what. And then we just take a few little cables out, disconnect what we can, and then this plastic piece comes off. And then this, I think, is something to do with the Wi Fi or the 3G. I'm not quite sure. Disconnect another ribbon cable. We pop that to the sides. Then I think this top cover just pops off, which it does. There's a screw there. I don't know if that needs coming out. We'll take it out. Disconnect the camera. There's another screw behind the camera. We take that plastic piece off. And now the motherboard comes loose. So it's attached on the back. So I'm just going to remove this side door to board as well. I'm not sure if it needed or not. Release the ribbon cable. And then I can get a bit better access. And then I can see there's a connection there, so we'll just flip that off. And then there we go, the motherboard comes out. The motherboard looks in pretty decent condition. Don't see any other damage to it, so I'm hoping this is the only issue. And I'm going to start covering the plastic part and the parts around the port that we've capped on tape to protect it. But I started removing the ports and then I realised, what did I do? I only took the wrong port off. I'll come back and I'll fix that later. So, a bit of capped on tape around the edges of the port that I should have took off. And then we'll apply a lot of hot air around both 360. The port obviously is already really damaged so it doesn't matter if we're melting it. And then we just keep applying, moving the heat around. Making sure we're getting to the corners where the solder legs are. So we can release it. And then it will gently lift away. As I always say, don't be pulling it. You don't want to rip any traces. Once it's cooled, we'll clean it with isopropyl. Make it all nice and fresh. And then I'm just applying a little bit more flux. And then I'll get my solder wick. And what the plan is, is to remove as much of the solder on these pads as possible. As the extra solder is not needed. And we can give it a clean again. Now we just need to apply some solder mask. So we need to apply this to the third and the sixth pin. 
I'm fine at the correct hours as you can see, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it on, put my light on it and get it to cure, leave it for a few minutes, and then when we come back to it, and get me tweezers and I can scratch off parts that aren't needed to be protected. So we'll just give it a good scrape, the ones that shouldn't be covered. And as you can see, pin number three and pin number six are completely covered. So this is the port that we're going to apply. So there's no extra solder wires with this. These four pads you can see here are what are going to make the contact. So first off we need to try and line it up as perfect as possible. We'll apply a little bit of flux there and then I apply some solder into that port. And then we do the same on the other side, line it up, make sure it's perfectly level. A little bit of flux, hold it in place and then a little bit of solder. And then this is going to keep it nice and firm when we apply the hot air. These two lines I believe are what are going to be connecting. So I'm applying a little bit of flux underneath and then hopefully my hot air, I'm just going to hold it on this area. I need to hold down my tweezers. I'd probably say try and pick a better location than what I did because it does, I am pushing down on one of the, the vias which wasn't advisable but I was okay. So keep applying the heat, moving it round and then in a minute it's going to drop. I wasn't sure what was going to happen but it sort of just popped down. And a little replay, you can see it popping down there. And then just keep holding it, remove the heat, and then let it all cool down. And then once the solder solidified, we can move away. We'll give it another clean of isopropyl. Keep cleaning as we go. And I just get my multimeter, and then I touch on these points to see if there's continuity. I can't find any documentation to say that this is what you need to do. But I'm getting beeps on these connections, so I'm on the hopeful stage that I'm doing the right thing. So I'm going to go with it and assume that it's working okay. So I'm just applying a little bit of flux. We need to apply some solder to these grounding pads to make sure it's nice and secure and it doesn't move. So I'll just hold it on to let the solder flow right down. Hold it nice and strong. We don't want any movement. And then I might as well touch up the other side as well, put a little bit more flux and solder onto this one. And then the same again on the other side, apply some solder, pull down the solder and iron, letting it flow to the joint bit underneath. And then we'll go back onto this one as well. So all four solder points nice and solid. And then clean once more, that should be our final clean. So we need to give it a little test. So we just need to remove this capped on tape to begin with. So that just peels off. So it looks okay. It looks like it's sitting in the right place. We will soon see. So I'm just going to plug the battery into the board. That's all we need to do. Just to see if we get any kind of a reading. And then we can flip it over. Make sure it's not touching anything it shouldn't be. We'll get our plug. With an amperage and as we can see on there we've got volts and amps going in so hopefully that says to me that it's fully working and it's job done so we'll quickly just scoot over my mistake here so this top connection i don't think it's ever been used i had a quick look on aliexpress and couldn't find a genuine replacement so i'm not doing a great job here but i'm reapplying the one that i removed which is partly melted but we won't mention that again We'll take off the cap on tape, it's no longer needed, and then we can start putting it back together. So this rear camera can go on, and then we'll reapply the screen cable connector. We'll pop it into place, we'll pop the daughter board back in, and then we'll just start reapplying all of the brackets, all of the screws, all of the ribbon cables need connecting up more brackets, more screws, but the big benefit of using this magnetic mat is that I can put everything back in where it should be because nothing's moved, nothing's been knocked, it's all been nicely secured. We just put this top fascia back on, just all clicks into place, buttons seem to be working okay. 
this little black plastic piece goes at the top of another screw this is where the rear facing camera is going to be going that just slides in and while this is taken apart we might as well give it all a clean so these shoulder buttons are all grubby so we'll scrape off all the dirt and grime and then use a bit of isopropyl as well same on the other side give it a clean pop it in has a little bit of a plastic bracket that goes over keeps it in place and we put these top covers on as well you just slide into position and this 3g board clicks in two screws plastic housing goes over it we are we just reapply all the connections and it also comes with a 3D printed part which goes around the outside of the USB-C port so it will fit in and look really smart. So we just need to reconnect the battery, reconnect the rear touch sensor, clip it all back together. And as you can see it already looks really good. And then we'll just give it a quick test to make sure that it's still charging as it is. And we get an orange light, so that surely means we're getting a charge. So we'll try and turn it on, but it's not turning on, so I am a little bit worried that something's not right. And I'll leave it for 10 minutes or so and nothing's happening, but I realised that there was an issue. I didn't leave it long enough. So I left it overnight, I come back the next morning, it says zero, which says to me the battery's charged. We click the power button, hold it down, and then there is the PS logo. And there we've got a nicely fully working, fully charged PS Vita. So I was a little bit worried at first when it didn't turn straight on, but obviously the battery needed a really good charge. We're leaving it overnight, kick the back in, touch is all working. And as you can see, Overall condition is pretty good. A few little scuffs and marks on the back, but nothing serious. Around the edges look okay. The USB-C port looks really smart with the 3D printed bracket around the edge of it. And you wouldn't really know it was total aftermarket. So they've done a really good job with that. And then here we have it. So fully working. I've given it a good test and installed a couple of games on it that it came with. It's played really well. I'm going to install some custom firmware on it on my other channel to mod it and then we'll sell it on. It was an interesting fix. I wasn't expecting to install the USB-C mod to begin with, but that's what we ended up doing. So hopefully you enjoyed. Thanks very much for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe.